Now, how much premium should we be aiming to collect when we execute option selling strategies? I guess there isn't a right or wrong way to answer this question. This can be quite subjective, dependent on a number of factors, such as how confident are you in your thesis, your prediction? If you're right, what kind of returns are you hoping to make? And if you're wrong, how much are you prepared to risk? Two people can look at the same chart and come up with two different conclusions. Maybe Jack sees this trend line and thinks the trend line will hold and the share price will increase from here. So Jack might decide to sell a 120-115 bull put spread right here. But another person, Kim, might see this support line and maybe think that the share price could potentially fall further before turning back up again. So Kim might decide to sell a bull put spread that is further away from the current price, maybe at the 110, 105 levels. Who is right? Who is wrong? Who knows? Time will tell, we will find out eventually. The idea that both of them have by selling bull put spread is that they're selling out of the money option contracts. The goal is that these contracts will remain out of the money by the expiration date. But if we compare these two positions, Jack's position is more risky than Kim's because his bull put spread is much closer to the current stock price. Between the two positions, there's a higher chance that Kim's position will be out of the money by expiration date. There is a trade-off between investment returns and the probability of making those returns. If we want to have higher investment returns, our probability of success is going to be lower. And if we want a higher probability of success, then we're going to have to settle for lower returns. This principle applies for virtually every kind of investment. Now, trading options gives me the flexibility to execute my trading strategies based on my desired probability of success. I can use the options delta to determine the probability that the trade outcome is going to play out in my favor. Now, this is something that I talked about more in my video on options delta. So do check out that video to find out more. So let's compare Jack's and Kim's positions on the options chain. So Jack sells the 120-115 bull put spread. He collects the premium of $147 that will make his maximum risk $353. His probability of success is 72%. So that means that he has a 72% chance of making a 42% return. Now Kim sells the 110-105 bull put spread. She collects a premium of $70. That makes her maximum risk $430. For this trade, she has a probability of success of 82%. So that means she has an 82% chance of making a 16% return. From this, we can see the trade-off here. Jack has a higher potential return, but a lower probability of success. Kim has a higher probability of success, but has to settle for a lower return. Whose position is better? Well, that depends on which side of the trade-off you value more. The thing is, not everyone desires to make the same levels of return. And not everyone is comfortable with the same levels of risk. But by trading options, there is something for everyone. You can customize your trade based on the return levels that you want to make and the risk levels that you're ready to take. And in the backdrop of all this, your expectations of what the stock price is going to do and your desired probability of success. All right, so here in this table, I've summarized the amount of premium that we can look to collect when we sell credit vertical spreads. Please feel free to pause here, take a screenshot if you need to. So up here, the columns represent the range of desired return, and the rows represent the width of the credit vertical spreads. All right, so how do we use this table? So let's say if you're selling a credit vertical spread and the strike prices you have chosen are $5 apart and you want to make a 50% return, then you should be looking to sell this spread for $1.67 
that will give you a premium of $167. If you're looking to sell a credit vertical spread where the strike prices are $1 apart, and if your desired return is 40%, then you should be looking to sell the spread for $0.29 cents, so you will collect a premium of $29. Now personally, I would aim for a return that's somewhere between 40 to 60% with no less than 60% probability of success. And I apply this principle regardless of whether I'm doing a credit vertical spread or a credit iron condor. Now this is the amount of risk and return that I have set for myself. And what this means is that sometimes I may have to walk away from certain trades. Either the return or the probability of success is too low. But the thing is there's thousands of stocks and options that I can trade. There's plenty of opportunities out there. So if my conditions can't be met, I'm not going to force the trade. I'm just going to move on and find something else. I think this is an important mindset to have when investing. If the potential trade that is before us doesn't meet all our conditions, are we able to say, you know what, it's okay. I'll just look for another opportunity or I'll wait for another time. Personally, I think developing the right kind of mindsets is quite crucial if we want to succeed at investing. We will be talking about some of these mindsets in upcoming videos. That's it for today's video. Like, comment, subscribe if you found it to be helpful. Share it with your friends if you think they will find it helpful. And I will see you again in the next video.